on and all, we don't want to keep voices up out of the way. I really am looking forward to it, Leslie. Peter tells me we put on marvelous productions at the expense of the public money. Yes. <laughs> would you care for a nice brandy? Yes, that would be most agreeable. I'll go get it. Ah, oh, let's see. Oh, yes, I left it in the kitchen, didn't I? Ah, oh, I was there at lunchtime showing Francis how to make crepe Suzette. I do find those to be such a useful staff eye, don't you? Yes, do you mind if I just wash my hands? Not at all, Leslie, not at all. Please do make yourself at home. Who was that lady? That Fabulous lady, that lady I saw you with last night. Hi, welcome back to Who Is That Lady? I'm your host, Ashley Ayala, and I'm here with our guest, Rachel West Balling, who is a local actress, award-winning actress, actually. <laughs> yes. And fine. social worker. She's also a CCSU alumni, so we're going to discuss some of her journey and how she came into working into, in the arts. <laughs> so you've done a lot of shows at, you know, at the Cabaret and other places. What was your favorite show? Um, I would have to say my first favorite show was um, Blythe Spirit. Mm. And I love the role of Elvira. Um, and it's basically a tale of me having died, and I come back to haunt my husband and his new wife. And I'm mischievous, I'm sneaky, I'm <laughs> sassy, um, and I really get the best of, of my husband and his, and his current wife, and it's just really, really fun. So and I get to wear this flowy dress, and... That is very cool, yeah, actually. Yeah, I get to make things <laughs> float across the stage, and so that was really fun. And then certainly my second favorite role would have to be, um, and which is now my favorite, Elvira was my first favorite, um, but was Morticia Adams and the Adams Family. That was just a blast. Oh, to I just play. love such how a you, character. You're the queen of creepy at, at the cabaret, <laughs> and I love it. <laughs> but you make it look so fabulous. <laughs> oh, thank you. That was yeah. That was a really really fun role. Again, terrifying. Yeah. But it was fun. And that was your first time uh, singing on stage, actually, for the mm. Adams Family. Yes, my first time singing in front of an audience. Absolutely. I mean, I had done you know, a little bit of singing here and there in a couple of my other shows, mm -hmm. but it would never be serious singing. You know, it was just something my character would end up doing spontaneously for a minute or two. This was like the big time for me. Yeah. So I was terrified. Yes, but you to, and you did an excellent job. You actually won Thank an you. award for that performance. I did. With I our did. Uh, onstage uh, friends. So yes. that was very cool. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> awesome. Yeah, that was cool. That um, was really cool. So at... What I want to know is, okay, so you've done all these roles, and, and you have an idea of, of what you're good at. What would be your next role, or dare I say, your dream role? Oh, goodness. I don't know. I'm so in the moment uh, when it comes to doing <laughs> theater, just because I think I have so much going on, mm -hmm. you know, outside of my theater life, um, with work, with children, with all of that. So um, I'm kind of very in the moment with uh, all the shows I do and with any theater I'm involved in mm -hmm. so um, I, I, I don't even really know I couldn't <laughs> even answer that for you right at this very moment <laughs> well tell us about the show that that we're doing now which is no sex please we're British and tell us a little bit about your character Eleanor okay sure um, well <laughs> it's a British show of course <laughs> and um, I play the mother of um, I'm Eleanor, the mother of Peter, and um, Peter is newly married to his wife Frances, mm -hmm. and uh, and I come to visit, and they've only been married for a couple of weeks, but here I am already um, imposing myself on them, you know, coming to stay in their home, <laughs> inviting, you know, strangers over to their house or not strangers, but you know, the the Going head of his dates. department, yeah. Peter's <laughs> yeah, department, his boss, boss. <laughs> um, and so I've got kind of a um, a rather big personality in that way, where I'm certainly extroverted, I assert myself, I'm um, nosy, um, <laughs> and not entirely respectful of their boundaries <laughs> <laughs> around being newly married. So, um, but it's, it's a fun role. It's definitely, it's fun. It's, 
a difficult show yeah. because of learning the accent and how to talk in a British way, which is not feeling quite as natural, but but it's fun. Yes. Um, at, as you were doing this show, what, what were some of the things that you learned? Because it is such a physical show. Like, mm. is, it, is it different than plays that you've done in the past, or are you used to this farce type quick? Right. Well, yeah. I mean, I've d definitely done farces before. The first show I did here at the Connecticut Cabaret was a farce, um, lychee and genuflect. So there was, you know, I got tied up in rope. I'd be thrown in closets. You know, I'd be <laughs> crying like a baby behind a door, you know. Um, so there was a lot of... <laughs> Uh, a lot of things happening right from, from the get-go with my um, start here at the theater, but um, you know I've done Moon Over Buffalo. You know I've done other farces too, so um, I would say it's not foreign to me. Mm -hmm. um, but you know, yeah, the fast pace and and all of that, and managing a lot of props, it's it's a lot. It's a lot of work. Although I don't think my character is quite as physically involved as some of the other characters. Yeah. So. <laughs> yes, but you definitely, you definitely have a shining moment in the show, especially with your fabulous outfits. Oh, so, <laughs> I can't wait thank for people you, to <laughs> can't wait for people oh, to see. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, uh, you've also had some passion projects that you I want to call it a passion project. I like that. Yes, like um, that. and it's something that you did with your husband actually, where you wrote yeah. a musical for for kindergartners. Is that right? Yes. Yes. Um, a couple of years ago, uh, a couple summers ago, my husband Mark and I, um, you know, we both have summers off, we both work in schools, and so, you know, we're kicking around in our backyard, watching our kids play, and coming up with, hey, you know, let's kind of blend our two worlds, our work worlds together. Mm -hmm. Me, um, you know, teaching kids social skills, and, um, you know, how to get along, and how to um, use coping skills to keep themselves calm, and then my husband, as a music teacher, teaching music and performance and all of that and so in movement uh, and so we thought why don't we put this together and we had thought of that ever since I got the job eight years ago but then you know n I needed some time to kind of get used to my job um, so we, we revisited our idea a couple of years ago and we thought of a lot of different songs we thought of a concept for it bucket filling which is what we use um, in our schools in Newington. We talk about, you know, you fill someone's bucket. Okay. If you say or do kind things, everybody has an imaginary bucket. And so we came up with bucket filling rocks. Um, oh, so, and that's we made, really cute. It's yeah. like incorporating, you know, the tools in the classroom with like a musical. Yes, yes. It's our positive, what we call positive behavior support language that we use um, at our schools. And so we incorporated that into the name, the title of the musical. Um, my husband wrote the song Bucket Filling Rock, so he wrote some of the music to go along with it, uh, okay. incorporating is the it, language. Is there any of this music online we need to do? Actually, yes. <laughs> YouTube. Um, I think my husband posted YouTube videos of the shows. So I think of both shows. Do we just shows. put Bucket Filling Rocks? In Probably. In <laughs> Kindergarten Musical. Is that what Ruth it's called? Ruth School. Yeah. Bucket, the first one I think is just called Bucket Filling Rocks. And then this year we did um, kind of a part two and it's like, uh, what is it called? Bucket filling. Um, peace, love, and bucket filling. Oh, so, very cool. Yeah, very so the tie-dye tie shirt. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, yeah, we had um, John Lennon, Give Peace a Chance. Yeah. So we had all the little kindergartners singing Give Peace a Chance. And oh, that's adorable. Super that's sweet. Adorable, yeah. Super sweet. <laughs> yeah. My husband did a whole lot of the work, and so i got to give him lots of credit. Um, but it was a really cool thing because I'm like, how else can I incorporate some of my theater background into the work I do with kids too, you know, so. And you work in, in, in which school system and, and what, do you work with kindergartners? I do, yeah. I work um, with kindergarten through fourth grade, so I okay. work at two elementary schools, Sweet. so. Oh, wow. And I'm the social worker at both of them. And yeah. you are actually a CCSU alumni. I am. Which is awesome. I've, yes. I've had the, the pleasure of interviewing quite a few CCSU Either, either students or alumni. Yeah. Um, it, tell us a little bit about your experience as a student. Oh, I really loved being at Central. Um, I thought it was a great school. It was wonderful. I had a lot of great professors. Um, I majored in psychology there, but minored in communication. Mm -hmm. um, I took a lot of theater courses. I um, at one time considered psychodrama mm -hmm. um, as my major, which was kind of, that's what they called psychology and theater, kind of. Um, having a psych minor and um, or a psych major and theater minor, so I always got a kick out of that. 
Um, but I went with communication, but still ended up taking a lot of theater courses, attended a lot of their productions, and was very impressed. And um, So I didn't actually perform any theater there, but I still felt very involved in, in many ways. Definitely, so. and, it, and it obviously influenced you in, in a great way, and, and then you came up with this uh, kindergarten musical mm -hmm. thing with, with your husband. So you guys got to use that knowledge, which is great. And you're obviously using the knowledge on the stage, like, you know, every other time that you're that you're doing a show either here or someplace else right right yeah yeah that's awesome. absolutely so that's really great and then the other question that I wanted to ask you hold on if you could offer any advice to any women or just actors in general who want to break into the acting game what would you advise to them um I mean I would definitely say just you know give it a shot you know look in um, you know, the local paper like The Advocate, current like for auditions or certainly now that we have all the resources on Facebook and stuff, um, just go audition, see what it's like. Observe an audition process to kind of see what that's like. Take, you know, theater courses in college if you're in college. Um, you know, if you have any friends that do theater, kind of, you know, hang out with them and go to a rehearsal and see what it's like, you know. Um, I think that's just kind of a basic, on a basic level, a way to kind of break into seeing what it's like, you know. Um, and you never know. I mean, you could audition um, just for any role in a show, and then they give you maybe a small part, and it's just a nice way to kind of introduce yourself to the whole process, you know. Mm -hmm. So, um, so that's one way, I think. You know, if there's any improv groups or even taking classes, I know Hartford Stage has classes that you can take, even like community colleges, I think, sometimes do. Um, have you taken any classes that you would like to, you know, maybe get, offer as a recommendation? Sure. Well, I, I definitely went big when I went for theater classes because I decided to join the Actors Loft Studio down in New York City, <laughs> right near Broadway. Um, near the old Studio 54 building. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. Yes. Um, and I did that for a good year, year and a half. It was crazy. It was a weekly commute, and certainly everyone that was in my class lived in the city or lived in New Jersey. So it's funny, you know, they assign you a scene partner, and it's like, okay, how are we going to get together to work on this? And so it would be a little tricky. Um, but the cool part about that is... Um, you know, you're put in a class with certainly a mix of people with different experiences and backgrounds and abilities, and, and it's just really cool. You can learn so much just by being around it. Mm -hmm. um, so, and I did have the opportunity to, um, you know, do what they call a showcase for a casting director to come in, someone who works for, at the time, this was a while ago, Third Watch, um, you know, some of those New York soap operas and, and things like that, um, Law and Order. Um, and so it was kind of neat to, to experience, okay, this is doing a showcase. Um, this is somehow some ways in which they pluck, you know, actors out of these classes to just have walk-on roles. Or, um, so that was kind of a neat experience. Um, Were you living in Connecticut at the time? Oh, I was. Oh, yes. wow. So yeah. It can be done. Yeah. It can be it done. It can be done. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, I think I was living in New Britain at the time. And so it was a crazy long commute. But... Um, but you know, when you get to New York, it's rife with opportunity to, for one, just get all the energy from the city of like all that creative energy, mm -hmm. um, the frenetic energy, but also, you know, our, um, acting teacher would sometimes give us assignments and say, I want you to go out into the, onto the streets of New York and I want you to assume this type of character or another type of character, or, mm -hmm. um, you know, and so she'd assign us different character traits and to go out and just experiment. And she's like, New York City is no better place to do it, so. Wow, so you were doing like the method and everything, right? That's yeah, the, uh, yeah, she was teaching from um, the Eric Morris um, method, but of course he was borrowing, you know, a lot of his training from, from other um, well-known um, you know, acting coaches as well. So, Eric Morris actually never heard of that. Uh, that uh, 
type of style or that, that type of instructor. So I'm going to look into that, actually. Yeah, yeah, yeah do. Um, I definitely, you know, invested in some of his books at the time and stuff. But again, I think he was definitely borrowing from other well-known mm -hmm. actors which or acting teachers, which I can't think off the top of my head. But yeah, yeah, it was fun. It was an experience. It was, again, very intimidating. But I learned a lot. And so. I, I, you did say that you didn't have a dream role or anything like that. But is there a type of theater that you are willing or really want to try? Yes, yes. Um, again, I feel like I'm a bit of a rolling stone when it comes to working in theater or thinking about what would I like to do next or in the future. I'm certainly open to anything. Um, I do like a lot of like avant-garde type of theater, maybe like lesser known type, um, you know, plays and, and um, musicals and things like that. Um, I've seen a lot of interesting stuff done in New York City that's mm -hmm. real off off Broadway, and that always appeals to me. Alternative theater. Uh, yeah, that really it just does. It yeah. does. I had a I have a very good friend. Her sister um, uh, worked. Um, she directed and then she wrote and directed plays for the Looking Glass Theater down in New York City, mm -hmm. and it's a theater that's like completely run, owned, operated by women. Um, and so another thing to Google very yeah, cool yeah <laughs> looking glass and um, you know so we would go down to support her sister and we go see anything that she puts on anything that she writes or directs um, and it was just you know so inspiring I'm like I could see myself wanting to do shows like this mm -hmm. you know um, where there's such a message and um, I don't know empowering for women um, but also I was briefly involved in playback theater. Mm -hmm. I um, took a couple courses down in New York City once again, mm -hmm. um, but someone made me aware of it at social work school. So when I was going to graduate school for social work, there was um, another student who um, heard me you know, talking about being in a play and said, oh, you know, have you looked into playback theater? So um, I went to go get some training in that. I joined a group that would just do it for fun um, you know, down in the Brooklyn area, that didn't last long because it was just so hard to commute down there. Mm -hmm. um, but what it really is is psychodrama, so it's um, taking people's real life experiences, um, usually people that are kind of in an audience, um, and then there's a group of actors that get together to improv. Um, you know, it's an improv scenario where they um, reenact the, that person's story and they give it back to them as like a gift. So when they act it out, they're giving it to that person as a gift and it's very cathartic and yeah. it's very moving. And, um, and it's done on the fly like that. Oh, like that. And it's fascinating to see the process. Um, I went, I had of course to see a show, an actual playback theater show down in, in New York. And these are very, very fine actors. And um, to see it come to life, because when we went, it was me and a group of social work students at the time, um, our train was um, hijacked, I guess you could say. So our Metro North train, um, we were coming down to see this playback theater show. And you know, all of a sudden, we're sitting there chatting it up. Someone comes onto the train, our train car, with a gun and says, put your hands up. And so, of course, we were, our nerves were just completely shaken. We were rattled to the core. Um, the police came on and handled it. Nobody got hurt. Um, so that was great. So we certainly moved on with our plans. Yeah. But my friend um, was one who was chosen to share a story. And that was a story she shared, because we were still so shaken up. Yeah. And so they all got together and you know did their, their thing, and they acted out for, for us what they thought our emotions would, were at the time and what we were going through. And they gave it back to us as a, as a gift and we were just all completely in tears. How did that make you feel? Like, oh, like you, you got, not only did you get yeah. to go see the show, but you actually got to experience, yeah. you know, experience like the power of it. Yeah, and it was fascinating. We were all in tears. We were all so moved by it. But we all felt like they really captured so much of our true emotions that we were feeling at the time. And that was just amazing and so powerful. And then again, seeing how theater um, nourishes people, you know, mm -hmm. in so many different ways. Um, and so it just 
developed an even deeper interest in the theater, appreciation of theater, yeah. um, and just knowing that it does, it is a gift for people in the audience. You know that when we are on stage, we are giving them so much. Yeah. You know? Whether it's that deeply personal and on the fly and in the mm -hmm. moment, or whether it's a, a show, you yeah. know, that's a fully scripted show. So. Well, thank you for watching this episode of Who Is That Lady? Uh, thank you, Rachel, for joining us. Thank you, Ashley, for having me. I appreciate it. <laughs> All right, and catch up for, with us next time for the next episode of Who Is That Lady?